Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden, and this guy always looking through rose-colored glasses. This is Tim, and this is Second Legacy, and thank you for stopping by. Today, we have got an amazing show for you. We've got credit card codes that are going to put you in a bucket if you buy a gun in California and soon coming to a state near you. We've got AWB bans that went towards the SCOTUS in mass yesterday and this week. And then we have a goofy gun grabbers where, oh, you guys are going to love every second of it because Tim's going to get spicy. I can already feel it. <laughs> and with that, Tim... How was that for an intro? Did you feel good? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Yeah, but I'm asking the questions this morning, Braden. Oh, what kind of uh, what kind of American are you anyway? Um, A red blooded one. Okay. Anyway, well, now we got that out of the way. There we go. There we go. If you guys do not pick that up, you guys will figure that out when you see a different kind of specific movie. But anyway, (laughs) moving on, we probably can't reference it. Oh, goodness gracious, Tim. Always getting me in trouble. Always having me pull back from the from the edge of the abyss. See, I'm kind of oh. I'm kind of worried though, because you know, I, I like having fun with the, the glasses in reference to the yeah, upcoming yeah, movie. Yeah. But watch this uh-huh. character that's wearing them wind up being like the worst character on the planet. See, and then I'm gonna you have do to, it to yourself. It, right. Yeah. I mean, that's just my luck. But we're gonna go with No, no, here we go. Not. We're gonna roll with it. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna roll with gonna it. Roll so with here's it. here's our out and our caveat. If that goes wrong and goes south, which I'll be honest with your luck it can, um, we're gonna go this could also be Elton John, or if that's not good for the people, it can also be always seeing the world through rose colored glasses because you're such an optimist. There you go. And it's just there you me go. Being now we have outs today. There yes. you go. We've got outs. So now with that, Tim, speaking of being optimistic, this <laughs> dovetails into it. Uh, what what do you think, Tim, about credit card companies giving us codes if we buy guns or ammo and it's going to be flagged and then handed to law enforcement? But don't worry, no customer information or what was purchased, just dollar amounts. What, do you, what initial gut reaction on that one? Yeah, I mean, because that's, I mean, law enforcement can do so much with just dollar amounts. You know, if we don't know who spent the money and we don't really know what they spent the money on, we're just, you know, adding numbers together. Exactly. I can see how that could prevent crime. I mean, that, yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. It's for the children. We just want to do accounting for the children. You know, Man, you ne- the children already, in the first two minutes, the children have made an appearance. This is definitely going to be an episode. Always about the children. Well, it's always about the children. Every time. All the time. Every time. No rights for us? Well, for the children. What about their rights when they grow up? No, no. Then it's for their children, too. Anyway, whatever. So this is number one. Uh, Dr. Button Pusher, I know you're there. I feel your good vibes. Um, American Express, Visa, MasterCard, move ahead with code to track gun store purchases in California, and the rose-colored glasses are gone. All right, so <laughs> we're, we're dealing with something, Tim, and there's some backstory that people need to know about here, and we're going to walk through this. So this actually has roots from about 2022. Tell me when mm-hmm. this strikes any type of memory on this, right? So... In 2022, in the fall of 2022, Elizabeth Warren and some other Democrats, and there's no slides in this. I'm just doing this from memory because we covered it. um, They put forward a letter to the International Commission that controls all the banking and credit card codes that basically standardizes it across the board. And they wanted to isolate everyone who buys a gun or ammo as a potential terrorist activity flag. Right. That was the whole idea. Well, they went ahead and did it through all the credit card companies. And then because we covered it and because Republicans got involved and all sorts of people in the political spectrum got involved, the credit card companies backed off, but the Democrats still wanted it. So the mm-hmm. credit card companies say, nah, ain't happening. Democrats still want it. Well, fast forward to about last week, two weeks ago, you had Janet Yellen, who is the secretary of the treasury. She came forward and there were questions about the treasury making banks classify people for their gun purchases and ammo purchases. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? It does. Weird. It's almost it's almost like the Democrats want to do this thing where they don't get it one way, they'll go another way. And now that the Treasury Secretary, where there was some pressure put on her, now it's going to California where they're, where they're actually instilling it through legislation. And this is where it gets really fascinating, Tim, because the people of Second Legacy and everyone else that watch it, we can stop this in its tracks but they've been relegated back down to the States. Does that, does that remind you of anything that we've seen recently, Tim, you know, where you're looking at federal and then you get kind of stymied and then you go to state level. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, this has been the tactic for the last few years now, right? So the anti-gunners are are not doing so well at the federal level, either legislatively or even in the courts. So now they're just going to start playing games at the States. And of course, you know, this for them, it's a sound strategy, right? Because yeah. and we've covered this before. The, the national gun rights organizations that fight all these things in the courts, 
when you disperse those fights out over 50 different states versus just fighting always in the federal court system and fighting in D.C. legislatively, you have to spend much more money fighting all these different court battles in all these different states. So it's just mm -hmm. divide and conquer and make it even more expensive for us to fight to maintain our rights. And they generally have better success at these types of antics in far left leaning states like California, yes. Illinois and all that. Right. So, yeah, exactly. It's, it's not new. <clears throat> no, it's not new at all. But it's but it's what's fascinating about this. And this is why I love doing what we do. We zoom out and we can look at the same trends across different things. They did it with the border recently. They did it with guns before. And now they're doing it with credit credit card purchase codes around the Second Amendment. So let me show you a few snippets here and then we'll continue to get to where it gets really juicy. So this is number two. So the new California law that will allow banks to potentially track suspicious gun purchases and report them to law enforcement. That's what we're looking at here. Reporting suspicious purchases to law enforcement. We'll get to suspicious in a second. Yeah, I was going to say, now, I, I want to know what suspicious is. <laughs> oh, oh, we're going to get there. Oh, we're getting there. So this is number three. So this is where what kind of kind of supplements what we were just talking about a second ago. MasterCard, Visa, and American Express initially agreed to implement the code for firearm sellers, but later paused their work on it after receiving blowback from Second Amendment advocates concerning concerned tracking gun purchases would infringe on the rights of legal gun owners. Well, no kidding. Of course it would. That's why we made such a stink about it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is some more of that same backstory that I was kind of bringing into the story on. This is number four. Gun control activists hope the code, approved by an international organization in 2022, can be used as a tool to help identify suspect purchases and consequently stop gun crime, including mass shootings. Proponents say a code for firearm merchants would allow banks and credit unions to alert law enforcement of potentially suspicious purchasing patterns in the same way they already flag other types of transactions, such as those that suggest identity theft or terrorist financing. Hmm. So that's what this is hmm. about. Yeah, because we've had Weird. so many, you know, major terrorist attacks where they've gone in and done suspicious gun purchases. And then, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe maybe That's there's odd, a, isn't it? a false flag they're working on here. Conspiracy mind. No, conspiracy mind. No. Hold put on. those red glasses back I, on. Good do, Lord. I, do, I, do I put the tinfoil hat on? But <laughs> um, <laughs> the props, the props. I got props. You have, I bet your whole wall behind the camera is nothing but props. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So... So suspicious gun purchase, what would that be? Mm, a gun purchase? <laughs> I mean, what, yeah, what, what, a gun purchase. <laughs> it, it exactly. should, they're just all suspicious. You know, so we just, we, we're not going to track suspicious. anybody. We yeah. don't know who you are, what you're buying. We just see this no. number. We find this particular no. number to be alarming, and therefore we're going to alert law enforcement. Well, what's law enforcement going to do, right? If they don't well, have that exactly. customer information, what are they going to do? It doesn't end there, Braden. It, there is an answer to my answer. question. They Every go, time. No, there's not. Right, because the, no, the, the the store gets its own code, right? Right. So they can identify the store. But hey, we're oh. not getting any customer information here. We've just identified no. the store and the transaction amount. So if oh, law enforcement goodness. goes there and, and demands to see sales records, they can match that number, $921.72. Now they've oh. tied it to somebody that made the purchase. No, mm. I hadn't even thought about that, Tim. Are they lying to us? Man. Yeah. They wouldn't. They wouldn't do it. That I or hope Dr. Button Pusher puts the sarcasm meter so far <laughs> off the scale. <laughs> that or perhaps they're just going to banks and the law enforcement are going to use the, oh, the special diddle bum oh. version of, of, of uh, what is it? Oh, not uh, diddle bum. Adobe. Staples Adobe. and paper. Yeah, yeah. And, Adobe. <laughs> yeah. And that way they can't really search it. They may collect the information, oh. but we have the diddle bum version that, that oh. doesn't, doesn't allow searching. Yeah. What do we say? We said it was the Rain Man ATF employees who knew exactly yeah. where everything was mentally. Yeah. Five thousand two hundred sixty-seven. Well, Tim, five thousand uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, well, here's here's something to to set your heart at ease because those are valid concerns. But but listen to this, Tim. While a merchant code, this is still number four, by the way. While a merchant code for standalone firearm and ammunition sellers would yield data that shows a transaction was made at a gun store, the credit card companies say the code would not provide details about the customer or insight into individual items that were purchased. So here, before you get going, I just have to ask the question out loud for a friend in the back. Then why? Well, but <laughs> what, what did they not say in that sentence? They didn't say we would not track the store with the unique Correct. identifier. Right? Correct Amundo. Yes. It, it's it's weird, I'll tell you. It's very odd. It is very like I feel comfortable because they said, after all, no customer information. They would never ever find a way around something like that. Um, ever, ever, 
every time all day. Um, so now <laughs> let me get you into this part. This is the part where I really enjoy this because in number five, this is just a brief thing to lead into six. Last month, executives from MasterCard, Visa, and Amex each wrote to a congressional Democrats assuring them that the code will be available for retailers in California by that deadline. Well, listen to how they're getting their hand caught in the cookie jar a little bit. Listen to this statement. If, you t if you've ever seen a statement, Tim, between someone who's walking on a tightrope, doesn't want to fall either way, check this out. Quote, with respect to the firearm merchant code, there continues to be a tremendous amount of regulatory and legislative uncertainty, wrote Vi Visa Senior Vice President Robert B. Thompson III. Of course, he's a third. Adding that the company will endeavor to comply with the requirements in California, quote, given that conflicting state laws on this topic and the likelihood that other states will enact legislation to either restrict or mandate the code, our, implement oh, goodness gracious, our implementation pause remains in effect. So what that means, Tim, they're not going to do this nationwide. They're only going to do it where they have the cover of the legislature in those states to mm -hmm. where they ask for it. Right. Or until they the know shuts that all this, this is down. not good. Right. Ex exactly. No, that's exactly right. So this is another example of the left pushing too far on something, which bleeds into our next segment with the assault weapons ban onslaught of a request that they did for the SCOTUS yesterday. Um, they're, they're pushing too far. They're pushing too many doors open, and they're going to eventually get the door closed. If you were talking about a video game approach here or a military approach, this would be called an overextension. Yep. That's what this would be called. Because when they when those doors shut, they can't open them again. And and these and these states have sympathetic parties in these credit card companies, but the credit card companies are going. No. This is uncomfy. We're going to be a little careful here because they know they're going to get sued and they know that the courts are going to get involved. So yeah. they're like, uh, that, exactly. Yeah, we're going to try to comply with state law, but um, you can see them squirming a bit in this statement, right? Yep. Bailiff, exactly. whack is pee pee. <laughs> whack is we tickle. We we can't get through a single episode of Second Legacy with some sort of pickle comment, pee pee comment, Cox for Glocks. I mean, like, good Lord. That's okay, though, because the Second Legacy people, they love it. They love every second of it. We, we got well, now, jokes. Yeah. Okay. We do. We got them in spades. Okay. I can't. We're, we're going to get in trouble right now. Like, I can see both of us starting to roll that. Okay. okay. The innuendo is starting to go. We're good. No, we're good. Because yes. we, this will, this will send us right back down to normal. Flaccid alert. Uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren. That'll do it. <laughs> this is number seven. A Massachusetts Democrat said in a statement, quote, it's a start that credit card companies have committed to comply with the merchant code in law in law in California. But we need implementation across the country if we're going to do everything we can to prevent gun violence. <clears throat> the sooner credit card companies and banks begin using the new merchant code for gun retailers and tracking suspicious gun purchases, the more mass shootings we will, we will, we will have a shot at preventing before they occur. I can't even get through this woman's words. <laughs> okay, so again, tell me. How does this nebulous proposal prevent exactly. mass shootings? What suspicious Just transaction? Because do these them. shooters go in and buy a million dollars worth of guns and go, oh, 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 we got yeah. our mass shooter. They just, they just bought like 1,500 Daniel Defense rifles. Uh, no. I, it, the, <laughs> This well, is, so this where this where this stems from, though, this this is the important piece. Uh, understand where this stems from, and then you can back out on this, right? Okay. This is all coming from Uvalde. Okay. So the perp the perp in the Uvalde tragedy, which is a horrible thing. Don't don't get it twisted. Went in with a credit card and bought three rifle or two rifles. So that's what the whole point was. Like, well, if they didn't have credit cards, or there's some way to flag those purchases. But then we could do this, that, and the other. Is that the there's a background check? Is this the same guy that also bought a brand new truck and didn't have a job? Yep. Okay, well, why don't we flag suspicious car purchases? Exactly. How about but we that flag goes... suspicious U-Haul rentals? Yep. But that goes to whoa, whoa, wait. Did you just make a did you just make a reference to something? I think you just did. Two somethings. Oh there gosh. were two somethings. Oh my gosh. One You're in Oklahoma right. and one in New York. Yeah. Two something. Right. What what wait, hold on. No, no. Three. And well, we had something third. where yes. a U-Haul literally drove onto the White House gates and had a single flag and a whole moving van. Yep. Anyway, that's had a, a different thing. Had a thing. single flag and and yeah. Oh, the whole thing. It was mm -hmm. it was terrifying. But you know, that goes to the point here, and this is where it gets really convoluted. You you're 
you're focusing on purchasing and credit cards being the issue. Well, do you know what they had to do in order to get to that credit card point? They had to do a 4473. They had to do a background check. They had to do all these things that the left tells us would be perfectly fine and prevent mass shootings and tragedies. Right. But since that didn't work and that's uncomfortable, now we got to focus on the credit cards. What this is, is the quintessential, well, my idea wasn't wrong. It was that one. And then when the credit card wasn't wrong, well, it was humanity. It's just like it's everything else they do on the left, man. It's never their ideology. It's always something else. It's always pointing other ways. You can't introspectively look at anything on the left. You can't do that, Tim. That's absolutely true. And I will say, though, him buying two rifles was incredibly suspicious. I I will give it that. That is insanely suspicious because I cannot make it out of a gun store without buying at least three. At least seven. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, (laughs) it seems a little off to me if somebody's only buying one or two rifles, they might not be an American. Oh, Uh, oh, they might not be red blooded. What what kind of American? I'm not going to do it. Anyway, don't do it. Don't do it. (laughs) Don't bring out the rose colored glasses. We're already we're already this deep. We can't do it. Uh, I already mentioned Elizabeth Warren. It's not good. Oh, I just got to do it. Okay, they're on. What kind of American are you? All right. There you go. Okay. You're good. You're good. I feel right. better. Do you feel better? I feel better. That was a good way to introduce and in that segment. We had rose colored parentheses on that one. Well, um, now we're going to go into the onslaught, Tim, Uh-oh. the onslaught that was at the SCOTUS yesterday, Ooh. right? It's because a lot of people in the main mainstream media, they don't follow these things much to the chagrin of many a people. Um, the SCOTUS received in the last four days, three different assault weapon ban cha- challenges to Illinois and Maryland. Both are really big gun control points of contention around AWBs. Mm-hmm. We had three hit SCOTUS at the exact same time. And Tim, wouldn't you know it? Both of them are in different circuits. Where am I heading on this? Where am I angling on this? Well, I mean, we see, we, we, we keep getting these differing circuit court opinions, right? Mm. So this is That's the weird. Supreme Court's job is to, you know, kind of resolve these conflicting decisions. And we've had a bunch of them. We've had a bunch yeah. of them. We just keep yeah. going back and it forth is. in a couple of different places here. And uh, it's time for the Supreme Court yeah. to do their job. So this, I will be completely forthcoming and saying this makes me very nervous right because it could go either way (laughs) well of course and and, but you've got to get to the prom before you you, oh no no i'm all for it you can't can't win a war if you don't fight it right you've got to fight the battles to win the war but there's there's certain people within the supreme court like the lead justice i don't trust (laughs) right and we get these we get these fence setting decisions sometimes when he gets involved right so that is true. It, it's just Justice it, John Roberts for the people. Yes, the in people. case you don't know who I'm talking about, Chief Justice John Roberts. But the mm-hmm. Chief Justice has this tendency to like never really truly address the core question. He'll just right. kind of fence it and kind of go, well, yeah, we're going to decide this way. Yes, the Second Amendment pr- you know, protects an individual right. Mm-hmm. But the but rule kicks but, in here. You can have reasonable restrictions right. exactly right, right. So, they leave something they kind of do like pull a yeah, kavanaugh where it's right. like, exactly yeah. right and so yep it, it, and it's not just him I and mean, we've seen other justices do it but but he's behind it no, and, and so it, it, it's it's really concerning when we get these types of decisions because it could go both ways they may not totally resolve the issue because in the past they've created those doors for these reasonable restrictions we keep hearing the anti-gunners talk about they got that from the supreme court because the supreme yeah, court no, was they, being wishy-washy so that's where they use it from. No, yeah. no that is. Well, th- this is why I love what we do, um, because genuinely we have been talking. I mean, you and I, since Biden was inaugurated, we've had phone conversations around where they're going to push, how they're going to do it. And then we about two years later, we started this show. And the entire theme that we've gone through in this is every time that they try to kick these doors open and they push too far and they overextend, they're eventually going to fly too close, close to the sun and they are going to take away one of their favorite to their favorite toys or tools for fundraising. Like if, if they lose assault weapon bans and oh. those are completely unconstitutional, that is like 80 to 75% of their fundraising. I mean, so, that is a lot. So where do they go from there? So here, 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 here's one oh, thing. They'll go somewhere here, here. Here's speculation, right? So if this gets shut down hardcore by the Supreme court, God willing, this gets shut down hardcore by the Supreme court. And they say, no, look, Self-loading rifles are protected by the Second Amendment. Mm AR-15s 
are in common use. It's the most produced and sold self-loading firearm in the United States and has been for many years. So, mm -hmm. yeah, based upon the Bruin decision, we apply that logic to these assault weapons bans going on in various states. It would seem that they have no choice but to strike it down. Correct. But it would seem. It Very would, important thing. It, it would, would seem. It would seem. But where do they go right. after that? Right? Well, if that gets Correct. taken away, this is something I've talked about before. They go to drum roll, please. Hand. Yep. Handguns. Because yep. that's the, they're going to go into magazines and handguns. Handguns are the yep. problem and anything over whatever arbitrary number they pick, you know, yep. 10 rounds, whatever. I think they go. I think they go handguns, universal background checks and mags. I think those are the three. I yep. 100% agree. Because that's going to that's going to force their hand. They don't want to touch handguns because they know they don't have the political capital and they're going to get a lot of pushback mm -hmm. because even the program Democrat voters that are out there, not necessarily the the swamp rats in, in D.C., they're all anti-gun, but the actual Democratic voters, there's right. plenty of pro-gun Democrats out there that want their concealed carry permit want their handguns and they're gonna run into some inner party the, problems yes. if they do that but they're not gonna have too many other choices if the supreme court does their job here well so no so. The, no that but that's the interesting point and i think this is a, that's a such a good setup for this next part understand beautiful people the only way they go if assault weapon bans get taken off the table and scotus accepts it because they haven't accepted it these are all requests at this point the whole point here is this is just amazing the amount of requests that they've They've enabled us to send to the SCOTUS. That's that's really the point. But if they lose assault weapon bans and they can no longer go down that road, they have two options. They either go the road that Tim just said of shifting to something else like handguns, magazine bans, universal background checks, red flag laws, Ethan's law, those things. Or they have to convince all the states that are required to do a, a removal of the Second Amendment. Tim, what do you nope. think is easier? Nope. Mm. Nope. That's impossible. They, they do I know. not, they do not have that. No, nowhere near. No, no, yeah. that, but that's my point. They don't even have close to the right amount of states or the support for that nope. because it's part of our rights, right? You, you would effectively be voting to remove a right from the Bill of Rights. Yep. Like, oh, oh, well, everyone's going to love that. So yep. they're not going to do that. That's not why they don't. a single that, red state would go no. along with that and there'd be a number of purple states. And there's states. only 10 or nine that are blue. Yeah. And the purple states, yeah. good chance, good number of them wouldn't go with it either, so. No, no, I completely agree. I'm not trying to say that that would happen. I'm just no, saying no. I'm it's just saying so yeah. There's just they have far of a reach. Yeah, there's there's this whole you know analogy snowball in hell. Uh, that's pretty much where it's at. So <laughs> that's very true. Well, so the first one we talked about, I'm just, I've got to give some credit where credits due real quick. The first one from Illinois is by NAGR. That's the National Association for Gun Rights. So that's the first one. The next one, this is number twelve. I'm just going to show you what they are. This is Bianchi versus Brown. Now this one happened on the eighth of this month. This is the earlier one. Okay, this one's out of FPC. Right. So I'm not going to go too deep into it because we kind of hit the high level stuff. But you've got one out of Maryland. You've got NAGR is out of Illinois. And then FPC did another one out of Illinois. This one is number 18. So this is FPC asked Supreme Court to hear lawsuit challenging the Illinois assault weapons ban and magazine ban. So this one also has magazine bans. This is an FPC as well. So. Tim, I think if you're looking at all of these things, there's some stuff I pulled out of the writ of cert that they basically they send to the SCOTUS and they say, hey, please accept this. Mm -hmm. I think the question presented is such an amazing question to wrap this up because we've already covered roughly three cases. This is number 15. This is the question presented in their writ to the Supreme Court. Whether the Constitution allows the government to prohibit law-abiding, responsible citizens from protecting themselves, their families, and their homes with semi-automatic rifles that are in common use for lawful purposes. That is brilliantly worded. Mm -hmm. Because right there is what we're talking about, common use. And uh, the Correct. Supreme Court has, has, uh, has some thoughts on that and they uh -huh. generally side with us. AR-15 is definitely common use. What was it that that number they put on common use on on some other case? It was like really, really low. It was yeah. It was it was out of Massachusetts with stun guns. It was I, I'm blanking like on the name. or something. Katano. And, yeah. Katano case. Yeah. yeah. I think the number was two hundred thousand. Two hundred or something like that. Yeah. It was really, really low, yeah. and they considered that common use. It's like okay, yep. well then, how about a hundred million? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like how about all these? Yeah. Um. Yeah. How about a hundred X? Right. The thing that I love about this is what FPC did in the wordplay here. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they hit common use, which is Heller decision. It's also backed up and supported by the Bruin decision. But I love that they said with semi-automatic rifles because that reveals what's truly happening. Right. These are not just AR bans. This would be 
anything that is a semi-automatic function to it. Mm -hmm. So you're not just talking about one scary rifle. You're talking about all the semi-automatic gas operated rifles that are out there in population. They're calling it out right there because if you just said AR 15s, well, that's kind of narrow in scope. Semi-automatic rifles, it not only hits the entire category, but it also broadens what the left has purposely narrowed. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Yep. I agree. That's good. That's good. And you agreed without the rose colored glasses. That's impressive. Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. But I mean, Tim, is there anything that you need to have your props ready? Because it's t it's time for G3. Oh, is it? And I, I want to make sure you're fully ready because it's time and take the wheel. OK, <laughs> well, let's see. We got uh, the, oh, where do we go first? Uh, let's do. OK, I want to put it to you. Do you want to do Newtown Action Alliance or do we want to talk mm. about Giffords? We got we got two goofballs here. Uh, we can go. With. You know what? I think I think it would be wise if we started with Newtown because we can wrap with Giffords, which is much more uh, timely. OK, well, then let's throw up old number 22, Doc, if you'd be so kind. Here we have the Newtown Action Alliance. OK, so Wednesday marks six years since a gunman armed with an assault rifle. I didn't know he had a machine gun. Anyway, yep. murdered 17 students and educators. At the, at, the, at the Stony Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. If Congress had enacted the assault weapons ban following the Parkland tragedy, incidents like the Uverde, uh, Uverde school shooting could have been prevented. Mm. Really? So let's go back in time, shall we? The year is now 1994. Bill Clinton signs into law what is commonly known as the assault weapons ban. Mm. And that was 1994. In 1999, five years later... We've been under the ban oh. for five years. What Don't happened in Colorado, Braden? Do you recall? Mm. Mm. Wasn't that the inspiration for all the horrible things that we see yeah. around schools? Yeah, like really that, bad uh, B movies like Bowling for Columbine came of this. Yeah. 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 Isn't that kind of crazy? Uh, yeah. So here they're saying that an assault weapons ban, if it were enacted after the shooting, then After, future yeah. shootings would be prevented. And we've already tested yeah. that theory and it failed miserably because you know what, folks? Very miserably. It's not the guns. It's never been the guns. Nope. We've had guns in this country since our founding. We have this country because of guns. And yes, correct. something else has changed the calculus. It isn't the guns. Guns nope, don't fire they've themselves. Been a constant. Right. They've been a constant, if you will. But see, they don't want to deal with whatever the root causes may be. They just want to take your rights away. So, but that goes back. But that goes back to something that we talked about earlier in this segment, Tim, when we were talking about the credit card purchases for the Uvalde shooting. You're talking about, well, it's the credit card company's fault. They should have flagged it. But is that before or after the Nick's background check happened? It's almost like everything that you promise and say will stop from government overreach and government. Um, uh, yeah, what's the right word? Government. Overview. Let's just say overview from government overview. It doesn't work. And then you start blaming something else and then you start blaming something else. And eventually you land where you want. And that's what you're talking about. It's never about anything that would be uncomfortable. It's about taking something away much easier, Tim. Mm -hmm. It's not about what would lead us to this point. Like anyone with a basic understanding of patterns, logic and analysis would be able to say, well, we've had guns the entire time and now we have a new a new, now well, that's not, I don't want to use that word. They've kind of used that word too much. We have a new problem that's been represented in the last 20 years. Well, we've been a country for over 200. We've had guns the whole time. 10% of the time we've had a horrible trend pop up. I don't know, Tim, it, I, I'm not, I'm not a math magician, but it seems like something else is going on other than the rights that we have in this country. It would certainly I don't know. seem to be the case, but um, hmm. you know, they're just going to keep plugging away at trying to take your rights away. And I want to remind folks, we have across all 50 states and federal government, we have some 20,000 reasonable restrictions on the books. Those would be <laughs> anti-gun laws. And can, yet, I, can I throw some pair, some some quotes on there? <laughs> some finger <laughs> sure. quotes on there? Yeah. Yanks, thanks, thanks, thanks. No, did you want to throw a quote? Oh, oh, that was it. Oh, oh okay. no, no. I threw up okay. the quotation marks. Oh, oh I, I'm no, sorry. I'm no, sorry. they were up. I I'm threw, looking at I the notes. Them, I, I did. I, yeah, I wasn't looking at the video stream. I was looking at the notes. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it, we have those tw 20 some thousand reasonable restrictions on the books. And there what do they is. pitch to us every single day? We just needed one more reasonable Anymore. restriction. We just passed the most Anymore. comprehensive gun law in 30 years. 
but that was just a start folks. We, we got so much yes. more work to do. And what is that work? Taking away every single gun they possibly can under the, yep. the false no, pretense no, of reasonable restrictions to, to go along. 100%. With, yeah. It, yeah. We didn't 20,000. Wasn't the magic number folks. It's 20,001. Exactly. And then after that's 20,000, 20,002. 20, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, that's how no, this that's works. In their minds. Correct. You know, the thing that, the thing that I wish people could see, and I mean, I, I do not blame anybody for not seeing this genuinely around this topic. They've built, and I'm, when I say they, I'm talking about the left, the gun control apparatus within the Democratic Party. They have built an entire corporate structure over this. They have managers, they have directors, they have CEOs, they have all of these organizations that are paid positions. They have to ha keep it going because if they don't, all of their overhead and their payroll is not going to get paid. Now, I'm not saying those people are out there only for the money that are working in the organizations. What I'm saying is the organization themselves are now at an overhead level where they cannot stop. To your point earlier, they're going to move to something else. They're always moving to a different focal point because they have to keep the attention, the donations and the grants coming in. That's yep. what I wish people would see because yep. it's so obvious to see it. Yep. That is one major element to all of this. All right, so moving on to our last G3, and that's number 22, Doc. This comes to us from our friends over at Giffords. And this oh. is discussing a, a recent shooting that took place. Two people were injured yesterday, including a five-year-old boy. Remember, it's always about the children. In a shooting in, Lake, in a Lakewood church in, uh, in Houston, Texas. We're holding mm -hmm. the Lakewood community in our hearts, and we, as we work for future where places of worship are free of gun violence. Well, a couple of problems mm. here that I see, and I'm sure you've noticed a few things. First of all, uh, they're talking about a five-year-old boy, you know, invoking children yep. once again for an emotional response. They kind of left mm -hmm. out the part where the shooter brought the kid with them. So weird. Who would have seen that coming? Right? No. Oh. And, and they also kind of left out the convenient point that a good person with the gun ended this before it turned into a yeah. massive tragedy. Left that part. I'll tell out. you what they they are forgetful today. At, uh, yesterday at Giffords, yeah. I'm sure that was on the rough draft. And then, Ugh. of course, we've mocked this in the past. Them making fun of us, mostly those of the mm -hmm. Christian faith, for offering our prayers for those that are suffering. You know, yeah. thoughts and prayers. And then when the NRA, for example, uh, wound up, Wayne Lapierre resigned and now is facing court. And then you have Davy Hogg and the other clowns out there saying, "Oh, thoughts, thoughts and, and prayers, prayers for the NRA," mocking faith. Yep. Uh, well, yep, now yep, they. Yep. See how they kind of sidestep that with this one? They're offering not their thoughts and prayers. We're offering the our hearts. hearts. So well, should the Supreme Court go mm. our direction and rule in favor of us being able to maintain our rights and not banning semi-automatics, making that illegal across the entire nation, I will be sure to offer my heart to Giffords and Newtown and Davy oh. Hogg and everybody else. Oh, you're unfeeling. You're unfeeling. You're a savage. I am You're brutal. a savage. But you know what, Tim? Maybe we aren't applying. I think this is important. We should look at this outside the box. Maybe we aren't applying the proper interpretation. Have we looked at literal with that sentence? Maybe they were pulling an Aztec and they were actually offering actual hearts, like cardiac muscles. Maybe like they had like th that was in like a bowl, something like a hitching post of the sun kind of situation. And that's what keeps the sun going. Maybe, maybe that's what they were referencing. Like, there, you know, difference we, in human sacrifice. That could be. Could be. I mean, I mean, honestly, have you have you have you checked where your obsidian zombie blades are? I, because I, I have not. You this know, could be a situation. We definitely need reasonable restrictions on obsidian blades and stone altars and uh, human uh -huh. sacrifices. Uh, hitching post of the suns, man. Yeah. If we don't have that hitching post of the sun, the sun will actually not rise. I, I that's I read that <sighs> scary thought. So maybe that's what this is. They are really just doing this to continue with the sacrifice of their hearts. Um, that's one option. Well, you know what the other option though, Tim, I'm going to have too much fun with this. The other option could be that maybe they were actually implanting something in their hearts, like the Lakewood community, like an effigy or something, where they like actually opened up and like put it in there. Is that possible? You think maybe, I mean, they, they truly oh. do care about the well being of, of, you know, they American do. citizens clearly, mm -hmm. you know, when they mock Christianity, yeah. you know, here they are talking about an actual church when in general, they just think Christians mm. are the punching bag of the world and, you know, we're to be mocked and it's made true. fun of. Uh, but when a, a shooting happens in a church, they turn away from mocking Christianity and then they try to act all serious. Like they actually care and they'll go right back <laughs> to hating us after this 
pivots well, I mean, and moves I mean, out yeah, of the news but... cycle because there's a couple of things here that are going to make sure that this doesn't really stay a in couple? the news. Uh, first, a couple? <laughs> a couple things. Uh, one of them happens to be that the shooter was transgender and that it. will push oh. it right out of the, the, the news cycle because they don't oh. quite know how to deal with that one. Um, mm. Yeah. So can't do it. And you know, the other, the other part going away from my, uh, my, <laughs> my Aztec analogy, I thought that was really good, by the way. Um, like a little self praise, no big deal. <laughs> the other thing there, like they literally, they literally completely omitted the fact that this individual, the transmission fluid brought the five-year-old with them. Yeah. I mean, like, like, you omit all of these facts, including a five-year-old boy was wounded. Yeah, and no, you massage the it the best you way you can in order to achieve your end means. This is why I always say they have a predetermined destination, and yep. everything else will be adjusted backwards. These people are just so. I hope they drop their heart chamber holder things. Yeah, right. Oh. You can. I mean, th- th- this just oozes being disingenuous. I mean, pure, oh. pure propaganda trash but anyway what else would you expect from giffords all right folks (laughs) thank you for watching the second legacy and we'll talk to you guys soon